So, welcome to another Safety Driven video cast. I'm here today with Randy Wastrom with uh, Coastal Training Group and BC Trucking Association. Right. So, uh, I got it right. Yes. I, I'm glad because I usually don't get that sort of stuff right the first time. <laughs> so, Randy, we were talking here in the office and it, it occurred to us that there's a lot of people out there who still are building up that, that level of experience that we take for granted. Right. So. We were wondering, like from, from your perspective now, what's a guy going to experience when, when he's looking at a scale? Like, like, who should even go to a scale? Well, yeah, that's a good question because we get a lot of drivers that bypass scales and they don't realize they have to report. Now, the minimum uh, weight to report to scale is 5,500 kilograms. Right. And it basically, it's anybody that's driving a commercial motor vehicle, but it also includes things like budget rental trucks, U-Hauls, um, anybody pulling a trailer so the, the vehicle will weigh more than 5,500 kilograms. So there's a whole lot of people not actually reporting when they should be. Right. They don't know they have to. Now, there's certain people that are exempt, and as buses regularly scheduled, they're exempt from that. Right. Um, right there's right. motor homes, okay. things like that, that are not a commercial motor vehicles. And uh, th so everybody else has to report to scales. Okay. Now, when you report to scales, you'll notice that there is a light board as you're pulling up. And the light board will say things like next axle, it might tell you to back up, it might tell you to proceed, it might tell you to stop. And it might, uh, th there's a number of things or it might say park bring in papers. Right. Now, as you're approaching the scales, you'll notice that all trucks over 5,500 kilograms have the license with the insurance decal on the front plate. Right. The reason for that is when they come, when you pull into the scales, they're looking for that when you're coming in. They don't want to see it when you're leaving. And for a lot of tractor trailer units, that rear plate would obviously be covered by the trailer so they couldn't inspect it. Yeah, of course, yes. So they'll watch that. They'll look for dangerous goods documentation or placards that you might have to have on there. Right. They'll look for any mechanical defects that you might notice, maybe lights out. They could look for... Um, uh, other uh, deficiencies, maybe ball tires, load securement issues. Maybe there's right. not enough tie downs. Right. There's a lot of things so, that. They're... So mostly these are these are things that are going to be. Uh, you're just visually inspected as you roll up. Right. So. And even if the driver looks tired, they could call him in to check his logbook to find out if he's overdriven his hours. Okay. Um, there could be other defects with the vehicle they they see too. They're, or they could just be a routine check where they want to drag somebody in. They want to uh, ask somebody to come in to have a look at their records, their driver's license. Um, I worked in the scale for a short time, and one of the things uh, we used to look for is drivers look too young to be driving. And because uh, that'll happen, and you'll think there's no way this guy can be 19. Uh, nowadays, yeah. uh, everybody looks too young to be driving. Well, the problem is the older you get, the younger people look. That's, that's right. Uh, that's, that's your comparable, unfortunately. So, one of the things we have to look at. So they'll they'll call them in if they look too young to drive, if they're too tired. Um, if we have three people in the cabin, we know there's only two seat belts. Um, those sorts of things. Right. Okay. So there's a minimum standard that you have to comply with. And so they'll call you into the scales. They will ask to see your records, that sort of thing. Like I say, it could be a routine inspection. They might um, want to be checking your insurance. They might check your uh, bill of lading. There's a number of things they could check when, when you're brought into the scales. But primarily, um, they're law enforcement for the, for the side of the road. And if you get called in there and they might want to inspect your vehicle, that's what we call a CVSA, Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance Inspection. Right. And uh, they'll go through that. Now, if you pass that, they'll issue paperwork. And you still want to turn that paperwork into your employer within 15 days because they have to put it on file. So whether right, it's a pass yes. or fail, they need to know yes. that you got pulled well, in. Well, it still it amounts to an interaction with a government agency, and they all have to be recorded on your NSC. Right. And yeah. because it's recorded on the NSC, it's going to show up in the carrier profile. Right. Okay. If it shows up in the carrier profile, it's also we have to show the records of when that happened if we're ever audited. So you bring all that right. paperwork forward, you, and it's placed on file. So right. w when you pull in the scales, it's not a bad thing. They weigh out your axles to make sure you haven't exceeded the allowable, allowable uh, GVW for that vehicle per axle, uh, per tires. Um, when they, you come in, they scan your license plate right away, so it'll come up with your, with your GVW for that vehicle. That's why GVW doesn't have to be painted on the side of the door anymore, because they automatically know when you show up what you're allowed to have. Right. And they will weigh your axles out accordingly. Oh. If you're overweight, then you can be charged per thousand kilograms or you right. know, whatever the, the formula they're using for that. Um, also, load securement is a huge issue, so to look for load securement, maybe you're driving a gravel truck without the load being tarped, and it's got to be a tarp load, obviously, so that's a load securement violation. Right, okay, so there's a whole number of issues you're going to look at. Absolutely. And, and I have to admit, it's always been my experience that, you know, you get in there and 
those guys will even help you shift axles if you're just a little bit out of balance. So, I mean, it's a, it's like you say, not a bad thing to be called into this game. No, and a lot of times they'll just want to make sure that you're legal when you're going in, and they might just say to you, um, you know, you need an extra tie down on this. Instead of going for that, they might say, you throw an extra tie down in it just to be safe. Um, they might say where you're going, or I've even had them call me and say where you're going because we, we've just got a road report and the roads are really bad up that way. you got chains, are you ready for it? Those sorts of things. Uh, when I worked in the scale too, we would look at uh, driver's licenses were a big thing to make sure that they were valid licenses. Right. But a lot of times it was advice. Uh, we would have people pull in voluntarily and ask questions and buy permits. You can buy permits at the scales for over width, oversize, restricted group permits and various other kind of permits that you need as well. Right, a fantastic so, service. Yeah, it's a really good service because you can buy all the, uh, you can get all the uh, commercial vehicle safety enforce, enforcement uh, regulations there and also all the permits that are required. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, fantastic. Scales are not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, and really, they're all about making everybody safe on the road. That's right. Absolutely. So, fantastic. Thank you very much, Randy. Thank you, Earl.